Hello and welcome back to another lecture of this complete Angular course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about template reference variable. A template reference variable is a variable which stores a reference to a DOM element, a component or a directive on which we have used it. Let's try to understand template reference variable with an example. So currently in our application, we have implemented this search functionality in such a way that when the user starts typing something inside this search text box, at that time only, it will start searching for the product with the value which we have typed inside the search text box. So currently we have typed Nike. So here it has searched for all those products whose name contains Nike in it. Okay, but what we want is instead of start searching as soon as the user starts typing inside this search text box, we want to search for the products when this search button is clicked. Now currently what is happening is whenever we type something inside the search text box, for each character we enter inside this search text box, this value will be assigned to this search text property of this search component. So in the search component.html you see here we are doing two-way data binding. So whenever the user types something inside this search text box, inside this input element, that value will be assigned to this search text property. And then we are passing the value stored inside this search text property to the product list component. So in the product list component, if you go to product list component.html, there we are using the search text property to filter the products based on that search text. Right. But now, instead of start searching as soon as the user starts typing something inside the search text box, now what we want is whenever this button is clicked, after that only the search should happen. For that, the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to remove this two-way data binding from this input element. Now here, we are also binding this input event. So whenever this input event happens, we are calling this on search text change method. And inside this on search text change method, we are raising this event, this custom event, which we have created. But for now, I will also remove that. So I'm going to remove this event binding as well. So now if you go to the web page and if you type something inside this text box, you see, now the search is not happening. We are also not seeing that paragraph which says you searched for and then the value which we have typed inside this search text box. That's because that paragraph will be only displayed when this search text has some property. But since we have removed the two-way data binding from this input element, even though we have typed something inside this search text box, that value has not been assigned to this search text property here. Okay, so this search text property, it is still empty string. It has not been assigned with the value which we have typed here. Now we want to assign this value to this search text property here when this button is clicked. For that, let's first go ahead and let's enable this button even when the search text is empty. For that, let's go back to VS Code. Let's go to our search component.html. Let me close this product list component.html here. And from this button element, let's remove this ng class directive. We don't need it here. And let's also remove this disabled attribute from here. And there, let's add class attribute. And here, we want to add some CSS class for this button element. So basically, I want to add btn CSS class and btn search CSS class. If I go to the web page now, now that button should be enabled. All right, now what we want is when this button is clicked, we want to assign the value which the user has typed inside this search text box to the search text property. For that, on this button element, let's go ahead and let's bind click event. Okay, and in order to bind an event, we need to wrap it within parenthesis. And whenever this click event happens on this button element, let's call a method and let's call it maybe set search text. Let's go ahead and let's create this method in our search component class. So I'll create it here. Or what we can also do is we already have this method called update search text. So let me actually copy this method itself and let's assign that method to this click event. Now, if we go to this method here, it is expecting an event. Basically, we can pass dollar event here. And the value stored in that dollar event 
that will be assigned to this event parameter but here keep in mind that this click event it will happen on this button element okay and this button element it is not going to have the value which the user has typed inside this input element so when we are trying to get the target value it is not going to give us the value which the user has typed inside this input element because there this target is going to be this button element and not this input element i hope you got the point so from here i will remove this parameter okay let me also comment this line for now and from here also let's remove this dollar event now what we need to do is somehow we need to pass the value which the user has typed inside this input element to this update search text method now how can we do that for that we can use template reference variable so on this input element we are going to create a reference variable and to create a reference variable first we need to use pound sign and then we can specify a name for that variable here let's call it search input and all this variable is going to store is it is going to store a reference to this input element and that's what we learned right we learned that a template reference variable stores a reference to the dom element on which we have defined it here we have defined this search input on this input element so this search input it is going to keep a reference to this input element in the dom basically when this web page will load for this input element an object will be created in the dom and this search input it is going to keep a reference to that object and since now using this reference variable we have a reference to this dom element we can manipulate it so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass this variable to this update search text method and here we only need to pass the name we don't need to include pound sign here we include pound sign only while declaring that variable here we are declaring that variable when we want to use that variable we don't need to include this pound sign now let's go to this update search text method and there let's specify a parameter let's call it input el and here we can specify the type of this input el as html input element that's because since we have used this template reference variable on this input element it is going to keep a reference to this input element so that's why we know that this search input variable it is going to keep a value of type html input element that's why we are explicitly specifying the type as html input element now let's go ahead and let's log this input element basically this parameter and let's see what it contains let's go to the web page there let me open developer console let's clear everything here and let me type something here maybe nike and let me click on this search button so when i have clicked on this search button you see an input element has been logged here and this input element is nothing but this input element here okay so in this way using this template reference variable we have access to this input element in the dom and we are passing that reference to this method and now we can go ahead and we can use that reference to manipulate the dom so here i can say input element since it is of type input element it is going to have a value property i can say input element dot value let's go back to the web page and now whenever i type something inside the search text box let's say nike let me clear the console here and when i click on the search button that value has been logged here if i type adidas that value has been logged here so in this way on the button click now we have access to the value which the user has typed inside this search text box so now all we need to do is we need to go ahead and we need to assign that value to this search text property so again let me comment this line and here let's say this dot search text equals input el dot value and now if we go to the web page let me close this developer console here if i type nike and if i click on this search button now you will see that paragraph search result for nike if i type adidas and if i click on this search button you will see search result for adidas 
So now on the button click, the search text property is getting assigned with the value which the user has typed inside the search text box. And to achieve that, on this input element, we have used a template reference variable and we are passing that template reference variable to this method and then we are manipulating it. But if I go back to the web page, you will notice that the search functionality itself is not working. If I type Nike here, if I click on this search button, the search text property is assigned with that value and that has been displayed here. But the search functionality is not working. We can see all the products here, even though if its name does not contain Nike. For example, this product does not have Nike in it, but still it is displayed here. Same thing here. So our search functionality is not working. That's because in order to make this search functionality work, we need to raise this event. When this event will be raised, then only this search text value will be passed to the parent component, to the container component, and then the container component will pass that value to the product list component. And to raise this event, this search text change event, now what I will do is I'll copy this line or I'll cut it from here. And we are going to put it inside this update search text method. And we are calling this update search text method when this button is clicked. So now what we want is whenever this button is clicked, we want to raise this event. For that, we have put that code here. And when that event will be raised, we want to emit the value stored in the search text property. Now keep in mind that I am putting this line after we have set this search text property. If I put it before this line, in that case, when this event will be raised, by that time, this search text will be empty string. So in that case, empty string will be emitted by this event. So keep in mind that you put this line after you have set this search text property. Otherwise, it will not work. With this, if we go to the web page and if I type Nike here and if I click on the search button, you will see this message search result for Nike. And now only those products will be displayed here whose name contains Nike in it. Rest of the products will not be displayed here. If I say Fester and if I click on the search button, only that product whose name has this Fester that will be displayed here. Okay, and if I say nothing, and if I click on the search button, it should display all the products. So I hope with this example, now you know what a template reference variable is and how to create it. Now here we are using a template reference variable on an HTML element, but we can also use a template reference variable on a component or a directive. So in the next lecture, we will see how we can define a template reference variable on a component and how we can use it. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.